everyone. Welcome uh, to the New Orleans Fire Department 2024 to 2028 capital improvement plan public hearing. Um, Mary Massey, Deputy Director of the City Planning Commission. Um, and we are hosting this hearing to give uh, the Fire Department an opportunity to uh, publicly review and uh, discuss their capital plan over the next five years. Um, we'd ask you to um, go through each item that's requested and just briefly describe what's being proposed and the need for the sale and uh, leave some room for uh, comments if anyone has any open comments. If anyone wants to go public, it's okay to us because we have some time for our program to be able to ask questions. Um, and if you could uh, go around the table and go around with any questions. Yeah, Vince Smith, Director of Capital Projects. Uh, Jerry Harris, PM Supervisor for Capital Projects. Catherine Schoenheim, Project Manager for Capital Projects. Chief Ronnie Fiorello, Logistics Fire Chief, New Orleans Fire Department. Roman Nelson, Superintendent of the Fire Department. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. And Chief, if you guys can start out just giving us some high level overall summary. You know, this is a five year plan. So, you know, just give us an introduction on what your submission, you know, is looking at over the next five years, what is it that you guys are trying to accomplish through this submission? Uh, I, I, well, I guess I'll start off because it would be the name of Chief Wheeler and get into the uh, nuts and bolts. Basically, the majority of our, our capital uh, projects requested over the next five years will revolve around stations, facilities, buildings that are, that are needed for the fire department to accomplish our mission. In the future, uh, some uh, building of new stations, uh, the finishing and completion of the new fire headquarters that's currently under renovation at uh, the old MCS City Park site on uh, on City Park Avenue, uh, getting uh, generators to fire stations to make sure that the fire station can function after uh, natural disasters and emergencies. You know, we've had several storms in the last couple of years where the fire stations really were the refuge of the neighborhood and sure that the fire stations uh, can remain and do so in those kind of situations where people come in charge of that with chemical information from the cold water. And, uh, and not the least of which that the fire, fire, fires can stay in those stations and respond to those areas. So that's really a big thing. Uh, uh, warehousing, storage, and some of our equipment. We have a lot of equipment that's, uh, that's outdoors, subject to the sun and the weather. Uh, it does dry run. Uh, uh, also, we've been looking at being proactive about uh, relocation and Validation of some fire stations in those strategic areas. So uh, understanding that we have to acquire the land before before it's even worthwhile to lock up public funds to build the building. So we've uh, got some money left to acquire uh, uh, land to support some new stations that are future planning. And then uh, also uh, our fire apparatus might be used uh, expense for the public. Just looking at uh, uh, updating our fleet and then good, getting to a good replacement plan. So we're not spending the uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to sit and maintain the old apparatus. Uh, additionally, with the current environment and supply chain issues that everybody's aware of, fire apparatus are now taking three plus years from, from order to uh, when we actually get delivered. So we are uh, knowing that and getting some foresight, looking ahead to uh, do some investiture now to get apparatus uh, on the table for the, uh, for the replacement plan and, uh, and maintain the fleet. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chief Fiorello to some details. Okay, would you like to uh, line item number one is uh, <clears throat> phase three of the new fire headquarters. Uh, this is uh, phase two is currently started back up about a month ago, as we all know. And uh, according to my uh, project manager, certain items was not um, covered uh, inclusively in phase one and two, one being uh, furnishings or furniture. Also, we uh, are asking for a, a hardening <clears throat> package, uh, uh, armed security fencing, um, cord swipe reader uh, controls for the uh, parking area, uh, some 16 canopy covers uh, that will serve uh, for inclement weather, including protecting um, electrical outlets to accommodate our 
our vehicles and, and, and as we are updating to um, <clears throat> needing uh, computers and, and vehicles, we're also asking for an EV outlet uh, to keep up with uh, the, the future changings of, uh, as our, our environment grows. Um, and that total comes to uh, 1.6 million. Um, that's the bulk majority of what the phase three is for fire headquarters. Um, on item number two. But hold on, uh, Chief, just a couple questions. Um, so we did not have FFE in our budget in our phase two budget. Jim um, confirms that. Jim confirms that, sorry. That we do not. And at 1.6, I did ask for uh, 250,000 FFE. Yeah, you got them. Look at you got in your description. You got two line items. You got FFE fees 250, and then you know you got your tents, and then it says furniture 700,000. Now, are these different? Is the, uh, is the furniture some kind of citywide fire department furniture replacement, or is this 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 700,000? Associated with the headquarters because you got that's a total of almost a million dollars. It's, it's exclusively for our new fire headquarters. Um, that's the question is what's the difference between FFE and, and furniture? Uh, that, that may have been A and E to uh, come up with architect and engineering plans for the uh, iron gates and the cold swipers that uh, the FFE. Okay, do me a favor. If you could just kind of clean that up, make it a little easier to understand. One, two, do you have, where'd you get your number for the FFE? I believe we just Jen. Jen. So you got an itemized list of your furniture? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'd, I'd like to at least that include that okay. in this package. I want the list of furniture. Say that uh, Jen gave us a number. I don't know if she gave us a list. It might have been. I think it was more based on um, percentage. Two okay. percent. It, it was. Yeah, it was percentage okay. of the total project. Okay. So I don't think we have a list. I okay. think that's kind of, I think that's what the A and E team would be. Okay, well, like I said, I, I think it's needed to be this description needs to be cleaned up a little more if in fact you got items rolled up into this, just break it out so that it's a little more clear. Um, and just just so I, I understand it also, Chief, the canopies, so you're you're wanting some additional canopies put in the parking lot area so you've got cover for various vehicles and stuff there that can be in an EV station at one of them. Yes, it's, it's to pretty much cover uh, the staff, the executive staff, along with the electrical devices that would be okay. specific to those spots. Okay, and then just our, like the nicer fence with the card access and everything. Yes, okay. yeah. right. we have visit the parking that have to be separated. Okay, all right. And then there's, there's, there's no fence in front of me, like just the contract fence on the vehicle. Right? There was no fence in the building along the railroad tracks. Some of that, yeah. Yeah, you can expand and get, you know, that 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 you is critical. Uh, the bathroom is critical. So, um, you know, just let's keep an eye on the contingency. See if we can see, uh, you know, some some of these items in the line. Are you saying that because of the soil contamination, that precluded your contingency? Mm, no. no, that's that's that a different from that was phase one. one. Sorry. And actually, you know, we had to add some money to the project. And I need to check with Jen. You know, we should have, that would have been an opportunity to add money to FFE for sure. Um, so, 
you know, I'll circle back with you, Jan. Now, on these other items, were the, any of these items items that were in was in the original plan at some point and the values engineer out, or these items just didn't make the scope? To my understanding, they just didn't make the scope. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and just for people out there that may not know, you know, shoreline, shoreline power houses, the new vehicles and the, uh, the equipment in the vehicles, the tablets and other things that, that uh, are responsible to be by, they have to have a uh, shoreline, which is basically just a plug that plugs into the vehicle to keep the battery charged so that those devices, they have to always be on some kind of mm -hmm. Okay. And I have uh, information from Jen. Furniture was not included in phase two, but she has started discussions with Nano to update that furniture plan. So hopefully, um, I'll check with her to see if we can reduce that A and B B. And then um, the funding she set aside for this was uh, needed for the generator alternate. So that's why it was depleted. Okay. Ask her what our Okay, we can, we can keep going. The, uh, just one more question. The plug that's needed for the, the vehicles, is that a special or is it just a standard, like 110 to 120? It's, it's a, I think it's a 110. Uh, the connection is uh, it's called a Kuzma. It's kind of like a RV plug kind of thing. Okay. It's going to be used for. Okay, so it's, it has some specialty to it. Yeah, but yeah, it's, 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 not, it's, it's, it's not, not just like a normal 110 okay. plug. I think okay. it's 110 power, but it's a special it's plug. It's made because right. it pops out from the okay. the vehicle. All right. And, and also, not lastly, um, man, that's probably something. Catherine, check with Ellen. You know, we, she's working with uh, some of the departments on the installation of the new charge. We did. We did check with Ellen for, for pricing. No, I'm talking about the money. That she oh, she could want money from her. Get this put in whatever program that you know, Miss Angie is putting up some money. So, you know, let's see if there's some funds there that she can uh, possibly get draw from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we just asked for one on the EP, but uh, she explained she will want that first. Okay. And the EV thing again with the with the, uh, the cost of pushing the EVs for EVs, we know we're probably not there yet, but we're looking for the folks in the future of, uh, of uh, making sure that our stations and facilities are right. ready to go uh, infrastructure wise and make that stuff up. And yeah, I, just because this became kind of a, a thing, I'm just point, uh, pointing out that these are for fleet vehicles, not personal vehicles. Yes. Yes. Go ahead, Ryan. Okay. Line item two is the 8th District Fire Headquarters. Uh, that was probably a few years ago scheduled to go actually out for bid in the past in A&E, and we had um, funding for that, but that due to uh, other situations got, had gotten removed. And with inflation, we had, um, as per your uh, office, been advised to increase that to um, $10.7 million. Yes. And um, that pretty much covers uh, item number two, which is the uh, eight district fire headquarters, which is a shelved item ready to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and just on this one, uh, Yuri, this project would not fall under the criteria for the new upgrade. Right? No, my, my understanding is, is the way that one falls out, it doesn't qualify as. What we've been looking at is office or things like that because it's it's in the code it is considered storage for the apparatus and dorm for the yes. uh, sleeping and those are the two main occupancies. So my understanding, the way we've been addressing it, that would not fall under that. I would for the captain's quarters though. I would in the plans sure make sure to not write office and just write quarters. Yeah, but that's a that is a supplemental. Mm -hmm. Occupancy to what the overall is. Mm -hmm. Just a 
primary. Yeah, so you're looking at the primary occupancy of the facility. So the primaries are storage for the apparatus and dorm for the sleeping and then all the others are just ancillary uses. Gotcha. And on the I see that this was recommended for bond funding a few years ago. Um, yeah. Around six million. It sounds right. like obviously cost is escalated since then, but is that bond money is it for existing? No, what we did we we reallocated we took the money one and primarily because you know based on the inflation uh, you know concerns uh, it was this project was under funded mm -hmm. we didn't have the money to support it to, to bring it out take the budget up so um, you know we had conversations with councilmen uh, and we ended up shifting this money to cover the cost of the pool renovation and I think we put some into the Scaling up stage to make sure the ball is good. Yeah, so redirected. Um, and I would like to, you know, get, we, we've got to pull some money. I would think we can find some money to do the surcharge, uh, the site surcharge. So, you know, I'm hoping we can figure out how to do that in advance so we can not all of this work and take out the city and save us some time. Those were the circumstances uh, that caused us to shift the money away. Um, you know, of course, we committed to putting it back, and then we ended up shifting it once we had nice bonds there. Um, so, you know, this this should be a priority uh, project. Um, and just in that note, uh, you know, I have it in my notes, but if you had to make a decision. You know, we're putting back the money, but we're increasing the allocation as well because we have to. But, you know, with that, if we said, okay, you know, we'll, is this enough of a priority as we're looking at your project and this project of funds? If, you know, would this be a priority over? Number two, over number one. You understand my question? If you had to, to make it, if, if, I, if we said we're giving you five million dollars, we're putting back, we're restoring the money we took, but we're going to give you an additional five million to uh, to do. You know, that's yours. Where would you put it? Would you put it in this project? Yeah, would you rather do something else? <laughs> His question is the first <laughs> of me, I'll do it. And you know what? Maybe you don't have to answer that question right now. And that may not be an issue. But it might be an issue. So just I'm just putting it out there. I mean I mean I put it the, the, the fire station consolidation projects are based on city commission facility studies that go back. 10 plus years, yeah, right. So as far as if, if you ask the firefighters, even though their current stations are old and have issues, it's like, I guess the leaky roofs, and they're not getting where they are, right? You know, but uh, I think for, uh, it, it, that, that's really gonna be a city administration priority as far as mm -hmm. whether they wanna focus on the South Bay Beach station or Grand Bay Beach station in that aspect. From the fire department aspect, the, the fire headquarters is number one, then I, I would say I would say there's there's there's, there's nothing else above them that I would well but only thing above them is right here for yeah okay that, that, then that, that and, and, and actually I would personally I would I would not sacrifice anything on the list <laughs> right to prioritize prioritize those five station consolidations but I think. Because it's been so long, you know, the city hasn't built a new fire station out of city funding for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. right? And the, the fire stations are old, they're not complying with modern standards, they need to be upgraded. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the prioritization that needs to happen, I think, we, you know, we'll, we need to have that discussion with the administration. But I think the, the, uh, some of the other projects, uh, yeah. specifically the cancer reduction and Infrastructure upgrades that come to city needs to become functional or some of our biggest priorities right now. And I think then, you know, just because of the timeline 
uh, and the funds availability in the current market, okay, then you know, as an administration, you may be more considering the response to this project to build some other type of Okay. 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 So, uh, line item number three, <clears throat> and priority number three, is the replacement of stations eight and twenty-four. And for the past five years that I've been, been in this position, uh, this has always been an ask. It may not have made it up to number three. Mm -hmm. uh, without getting into a long narrative, we have made immense progress and is very grateful for capital projects, uh, considerations of our priorities. Mm -hmm. um, and this one now has, uh, to my understanding, uh, with leading land ac acquisition, you may have found a a, a, uh, a place of land at 1601 Poland Avenue. And with that being said, as per um, <clears throat> uh, capital projects is a uh, uh, biggest, we have come up with uh, $8.9 million uh, for the cost of land A and E, including the structure, uh, the price of which in 2024 would be the A and E fees of $1.5 million. Uh, in 2025, we got asked for the uh, Construction of it at the 7.4 million. So you got land acquisition included in the 1.5. I did. I did not. I could not get conclusively uh, an answer as to whether uh, some would be needed. So I included some uh, based upon um, the standard uh, percentage that we usually use. I'm not quite sure what that is at the moment. Uh, but, uh, I did include that. Is this in District C or D? I see myself here. C or E? Okay. No. This is this is right. This is in the upper nine. Okay. So that's here. Yeah, it's right. It's right. It's right. Yeah. 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 Come close. And, 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 you know, if, if I could touch on one thing, uh, also going back to, to the prior question about, about Florida Station, which is these new fire stations, and that's that's uh, what I touched on in the intro. Number 12, that money for, for uh, land acquisition for future fire stations. If we have to postpone some of these consolidated efforts, you know, with this should be on the land in the critical area, right? With this, with this combination of 824. We're trying to lock up the land, and there may be a possibility of a land swap deal. We're just considered that's what real estate is looking at. Mm -hmm. And we've identified some other properties. And really, I would say, if you ask me my priority, I would prioritize getting the land for the future fire stations, even more so than building some of the stations now, given the current market. Because what we're seeing is, if we don't, when, when the parcel becomes available, if we're not ready to move and get that land quickly, mm -hmm. it's gone, and now. We'll never get the opportunity to build another fire station in that strategic area. So now we have to right. shift our entire response model. Or we just never will be able to be able to co-locate stations and move some stations out of less than desirable areas. And, and what I mean by less than desirable, some of our stations are off in corners, mm -hmm. they're close to the river, right? They're close to canals. So instead of a station being out in the middle of the map with a 360 degree response area, they're off in the corner where they only have a, a 180 or, or a mess. So that's that's kind of what we're strategically looking at doing is getting the land mm -hmm. so that in the future those those kind of things can come to reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, re I recently went on site with the, the old uh, gas station on the NSA side. Um, yes. We had property management and they mentioned that Pipeline had some possible interest in property. Um, is that would that be? The uh, pro property manager proposed that as part of the 824. It's it's not the location that would enable us to combine those two stations. It would be it, it could be a feasible location for relocation of station 24, but it would not be a consolidated station. It's also a good location that we looked at in the past for uh, one of the one of the future things is is having a, a, a fire boat on the river. You know, we have a fire boat that was obtained through a, a, a poor security grant. That's uh, primarily to protect port port facilities and really the goal was to have it on the river, but 
there's no secure place to keep it on the river. And that, and that area by being on the canal directly off the river on the other side of the locks, if you could build a, a secure uh, facility there around the water adjacent, that really would be the ideal location for a city uh, uh, boat dock or something like that. Don't be set fire. Can I try this That, 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 that would be a concern. It, it, it wouldn't be a concern for uh, for a maritime station. It would be a concern if if one goes there. If, if the uh, engine company is prepared to come and deal with that. that would, yes, that yeah. would be difficult. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. As, as long as long as the public public dealt with plenty. Yeah. Right. Okay. So again, it, 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 it's something that uh, we've actually looked at that site for a long time. Uh, back in the early days of the discussions, we think it would be ideal for a maritime. Not a special operations coordination center, but it's not it's not a big need right now. It's just kind of a priority. You know, we want to spend it there and, and the uh, commercial developments that could bring revenue to the city, but it is a, a good opportunity for something like that. Yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, yep. so uh, prioritization in line item number four is PPED extractors and as a part of our cancer. A reduction initiative that we have begun uh, a couple of years back. With that being said, uh, we have secured grants to get some components of this overall uh, mission that we have. We have uh, obtained through grants uh, gear rack dryers and taking that into account and re revising our ask has brought that uh, figure down to uh, 375,000 um, through some of the ongoing uh, Hurricane Katrina FEMA renovations, we have managed to uh, include uh, uh, accomplish some possible three of our 32 different sites for the uh, PPEs uh, infrastructure to accommodate uh, the electric dryers and um, extractors uh, for the uh, PPE gear. Um, most of this is infrastructure. Uh, wiring to accommodate the, uh, the units, and it also uh, includes the purchasing of whatever is lacking as far as extractors to make it a complete PPE gear workstation uh, for laundering our uh, personal protective equipment. So you would be putting these, uh, these would be going out to the various stations? Uh, we've done a survey, uh, including with um, vendors that are specific to this industry at every possible location and the most economic and feasible route to go. So the answer would be yes, this would be for 80% uh, uh, of the stations would be able to receive this mm -hmm. and that would be very sufficient and 100% more than what we have now. You guys have done enough reconnaissance to, you know, to know that the upgrade are purely electrical and there aren't going to have to be any uh, you know, additional building modifications. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? You know, moving wall, you know, open it up. These are very easy retrofits, okay. mostly just requiring 220 outlets, both for the dryer and the wall okay. or extract. Mm -hmm. One thing I've looked at a few notes is whether they have to bring more power to the site. Um, you know, Breakers, etc. But mostly, most of the apparatus they will set to uh, kind of small items in place of some lockers. Okay. Yeah, yeah the big thing, we, we identified the ones that, that required uh, water and sewer modifications because ideally we would have the big commercial extractors that are kind of like commercial at, commercial washers at large mat. Mm -hmm. But we've also identified the stations that can't accommodate those. Some smaller, more like a residential, modern residential size yeah. unit that, of course, doesn't do as much, right? But it can fit the station, it just requires the power, but it works off the normal plumbing work and that sort of thing. And these are standard stock, equipment yes. stock. 100%. Okay. So then, if you got the money, it's just a matter of specking it out and putting out these three small Putting a plug in place. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you guys are. Yeah, purchase these before, right? Yeah. Typically, how? Okay, just working with procurement or whatever. How long is it taking you guys to get the put specs together, get it on the street? You know, or what? what what's? How long? 
We have not purchased a single PPE extractor during my entire tenure of five years being here. Um, I don't recall exactly how long it is a lead time on extractors, so I would not be able to answer that question. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But we already have all of the via dryers, via grains at every single station. We're using them without the heating element that's in it. So it's just, if it's just uh, ambient air temperature, which is moving air is better than nothing. But um, with the introdu introduction and the inclusion of the electrical power to the via dryers, that would um, that would be better and quicker. What would yeah. go in time for the, uh, the, the new dryer? Uh, don't, I think it was pretty quick, but I, I cannot say that with, with conviction. Okay. okay. But, but just clarify, yes, so, so the dryers, so the issue with the dryers is power, right? That, that it's basically it's high drive that you're hanging things up in the dryer. Mm -hmm. the extractors, because mm -hmm. the extractor, the company is already in the contract, right? You've got quotes and everything. And, and, uh, oh, we've we'll, we'll, we'll gotten quotes for them. Mm -hmm. we'll right. so, so it's not like we would have to go out and procure it if we are already in the contract. Yeah, that's matter of purchase. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's cash code, and um, we already have contracts with them. Okay. The, the product suppliers been pretty responsive as far as suppliers go. I do also want to point out that y'all have put uh, y'all have put out three hundred twenty-five thousand of your own since last year. So it's awesome. So uh, line item number five <clears throat> uh, is facility infrastructure upgrades. Uh, that is a complete, pretty much assessment of our current electrical demands from our facilities and is specific and relates to the EV outlets so that we can uh, be prepared for the future as well as uh, electromotive uh, charging requirements for vehicles. Uh, asked for an AV of uh, in 2024 50,000 and then the implementation of uh, half of our stations to be done in 2025 and the other half to be done in 2026 at roughly um, 495,000 respectively. So, so, uh, so right, just to be clear, so the previous one was the actual extraction, the enhanced production, this infrastructure thing is not just the EVs, this is all, right. the, all yeah. the infrastructure work for the port, mm -hmm. for the, the extractors, the, the uh, pipe type uh, gear dryers, as well as to make sure that the panels can accommodate EVs in the future. We're not putting EV charges at every station right now, this is just making sure that the service coming into the station is going to have it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a little bit of overlay there, but that's very hard to separate the two. I think we've done uh, as best that we could to do that. Okay. Um, one is a slight higher priority than the other, being that it's uh, cancer related mm -hmm. and eminent right now. And as Chief Nelson has emphasized, uh, basically as a safety net to make sure that we haven't um, overlooked anything, uh, that would be the line item five request of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Do you have a uh have, have you looked at your stations and you know come up with a way of, so I, I'll call it an implementation. You know, you know, yeah, yeah, we we have the uh, you got the list, list of which ones you were going to do. Okay, can we get a copy of that? Yes. It would be good to include. Request number six <clears throat> and prioritized as uh, number six, fire apparatus replacement. This was done several years ago, and we have uh, lived up, or well, the city has lived up to uh, its uh, replacement schedule. And so, therefore, in 2024, uh, we're asking for no funding, 
but as in a five year projected, uh, we will need 9.7 million in, in 2025 to purchase one fire pump. Uh, we need 750,000. And then for every year thereafter, we will finally be in, in tune with our uh, replacement plan uh, to keep every apparatus, and I believe it's under 10 years of age, from here on out, and that would be $3 million per year, every year investment, and we will finally have reached and satisfied our uh, long sought after fire apparatus replacement plan. And, and, and uh, just so I had a conversation with EMD about this, I think they're duplicating this in their capital project. And Budget, I think over years we have because we're not quite sure where schemes come from to this put it that side of that. But they I think they are exactly duplicating what we put in. Uh, okay, uh, well. yeah, so you submitted a list to them? Yeah, yes, sir. So I had a conversation with uh with the BMD and uh, we, we sent them our list and I think I think they were uh they were leaning towards uh, trying to possibly procure apparatus next year, but I think and then and really just for the public. So we've got we got uh, five new apparatus coming at the end of the year, a new apparatus coming in that start of next year, and then we have an order in this year that will make uh, completely upgrade our fleet when this year's order comes in. But that order has a three year window. Right? And that's why we were thinking uh, to uh, take a B four year and then start ordering different apparatus which would start staggering them for the replacement. Okay. 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 So on item number <clears throat> or request number seven, and it's it's ranking. Uh, I wish I could move this up significantly higher, but I have six higher authorized uh, requests, and this is our fire station generators. Uh, with that being said, we're we're asking for. Uh, a ongoing general uh, 1.1 million dollars over the next five years. Uh, I have most recently uh, completed the IDA uh, inspections of our stations and for those stations um, that have uh, had generators fail during the event of IDA, I have asked on that end as well uh, uh, mitigation so that we have a more reliable source uh, generator fixed to codes elevated and so forth and so on um, and I have submitted that uh, through our um, reporting back to the uh, point of contact with uh, FEMA and uh, on the PDU unit with the city of um, <clears throat> We're asking for uh, A&E uh, in 2024 of $121,000 and 250000 per year for the remaining four years to accomplish getting uh, natural gas powered generators. And we have prioritized our list of stations that we need them uh, accordingly. Okay. Request number eight. Ranking number eight, fire station major repairs. Uh, we've asked for this uh, repetitively in the past. Uh, we have received some of it. It's an ongoing uh, request uh, for the five uh, next five years. It's three point seven million dollars, uh, roughly seven hundred fifty thousand per year for the next five years. It has greatly been. Um, uh, Used to a uh, to supplement um, the FEMA renovations that we are currently doing right now and continue to do. Uh, out of uh, 30 stations, uh, we have several stations that exceed 100 years of age, and that's with uh, request number eight as far its continual maintenance over a uh, scheduled period of time of our aging uh, facilities. Do you guys, property management basically does your maintenance? That's correct. Well, 
Well, they well, get they, those was basically responsible. Their responses. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know how to. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, we all know property management has, you know, they're, they're dealing with staff insurance just like everyone else, right? But they're, they're, they're responsible for all the city buildings. And then, you know, fire department wise, we have probably more facilities than anybody but more. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's a big strain. So uh, th th this is really what that's about is by, by doing these. Uh, Ongoing renovations and kind of minimize the need for property management and strain on them to make them some of these decisions. And to be clear, you're not going to Yes. Uh, so, so property management is responsible, as uh, Chief knows, and, and um, Mr. Smith knows, mm -hmm. of maintaining the facilities. We do have and maintain one one general knowledge technician in construction, probably could use another one. And we do hire on an overtime basis a property management support team that pretty much does rival the accomplishments of property management, may even exceed their accomplishments. Um, so, so you got folks that are on staff that can, you know, on, on smaller projects, put the packages together, work with purchasing to put them out. Yeah. Well, we do it all internally. Yeah, and we. It's all operating. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we're in the house of Green Supply Tech, who has the cost of steel. I'm, I'm uh, requesting from the administration to let me hire an additional. Really, what it is, the question is, well, what, how can we hire the property management staff? Because we have firefighters that can do everything. Yeah. And we can convince retired firefighters to come back and help maintain the space when it comes down there because they're, they're part of the fire floor. Yeah. So, so that's kind of what we're looking like. Bringing someone back to help out with some of these uh, minor repairs. And then along with the, uh, with some of these major renovations, and kind of taking some of that burden off of property management and everything else that's in the mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. But Vince is asking uh, not about the, the guys that are you know going to be on the site fixing the work. Do y'all have somebody? I mean, I know you have Jason and yourself. Are y'all do y'all have the capacity to route these contracts? You know, follow the bidding. Like um, the administrative stuff. Yeah. Uh, we would. We would have to work that out internally um, and become more familiar with that process, or even inquire additional staff and see all the specific positions. I'll say from what I've seen, it, it looks like to me it looks like y'all are working on items under a thousand dollars, so small things that they can accomplish in house without as much admin. Mm -hmm. Is that pretty accurate? It would yeah, yeah. certainly yeah. help with that thousand dollar limit. Really brought up the reality. Yeah, yeah. But it might be just this consideration of just putting the operating budget together. And, you know, once again, you know, one of the challenges that, you know, property management has had, and us as well, just this capacity in terms of having, you know, the administrative support. Uh, you know, I guess we get, you know, we want to consider. Well, but, but, but the funny thing is, in the past, like when I came on the job, the fire department did have. Person that was assigned to do that, but at that time they weren't building any stations and they weren't building any repairs. Yeah. So they ended up kind of helping out just in very general administrative capacity. But now, given the, the amount of work that the city has, so you know, as you're putting your operating budget together, I really do think it's a great idea if you guys consider having somebody on the staff. Deliver your home. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, you're, you're watching Jason and you and he basically do this for stations and roof repairs. Absolutely. You know, it's it's some, something that you're basically doing anyway, but you just you know you need to do it. Anyway. I've, uh, I've, I've had I've had conversations with the administration. I'm going to have to give, give me our facilities, right? Give us our feet, yeah. right? Because he and we can't really. Just the capacity to manage our fleet, and, and I think it's a lot more work, a lot more headaches, but at least we know it's getting done. That's the focus. Whereas right now, it's kind of diluted with all of the other city needs. You know, we kind of lose track. We're, 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 the, we're, we're really the only uh, uh, city entity that's 24 hours and has staff sleeping on site. Mm -hmm. We're at least 24 hours with their rotating shifts. And so, the, just the, 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 the constant maintenance on these yeah. shifts just doesn't take too much, too much of a toll. But even you know, for me, it just maybe promotes the conversation of uh, you know if if the person.
person is in property management or corporate sales or whatever, you know, you guys, and we have the same challenges as well. You know, we need to have these buildings set priorities. It's almost like, okay, this person's in this person's in this shop. They need to be, you have to pay this much sign to us so we can, uh, you know, help manage yeah. their workload and establish their priorities right. so that, you know, you're getting you're getting out what you need to have out when you need to have it. Okay. Thank you. Is this just uh, number eight regarding page 109? Uh, we're working on that and establishing I think a line item budget with um, mosquito and pest control. Um, I'm sure that would be, could be inclusive of saying because you have the um, page 38, I'm, I'm just going to indicate that to 770 for this one. Um, I, I, can, I can go along with that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah you can just give me 50. Yeah, I'll show up station 38. I'll get it to 909. Oh, that's station 15 and 13. I mean, the 30, that means. Okay, so you need to add 40, so then add, make it 790. Okay, uh, go ahead. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> request number nine and uh, department ranking as such as nine. There again, uh, this is a getting a a bit proactive mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, acquisition of an uh, entirely new uh, auto and a truck fleet of vehicles mm -hmm. uh, and without any facilities that I know of that has um, canopy covers to protect uh, our auto fleet. Uh, I was asking for uh, canopy covers um, to be installed at specific facilities that can accommodate them. Uh, they would also uh, be providing shelter to um, special operations equipment such as uh, open trailer, open bed trailers, closed bed trailers, and so forth and so on that are 100% now. Any elements, and most recently we have um, used a, a fair amount of in-house labor to refurbish said units. Uh, this also is in keeping with the lack of a central warehouse to store uh, uh, value, valuable equipment and vehicles uh, in a staging capacity uh, as opposed to just direct sunlight. Um, this is a much less expensive uh, alternative to that until such warehouses are uh, acquired. Now just, just as a question, Vincent, on the uh, potential logistics warehouse, I know we've been in discussions on the one with Homeland Security, which is fairly substantial. You know, is that something that we could potentially yeah, look no, at? Yeah, definitely. We, got the, 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 we kept the warehouse in here because so, so one of the discussions was, you know, and I, and I had this discussion with, with the council because they felt like the request for the unified public safety warehouse was last minute. And I told them we were asked, we asked for $12 million in warehousing last year. And they kind of thought, okay. So it, it, it's we're all kind of we're all kind of making a request separately because we don't know where it's going to go. But uh, the current uh, unified warehouse that we're talking about, I think, will solve okay. most of our warehouse. That's the one that Homeland Security. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's it's uh it's it's much larger than yeah. than we anticipated. The height of it really did a lot of. Yeah, you so you see, uh, we, it wouldn't take it too. We, we have a public safety team. We went walk through. We, I, mean, I mean, we still, still concrete, still reinforced. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, they have got like thirty-five foot high. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Good. So. Really good. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this this canopy request is really like the stuff we have. I mean, we've got over a million dollars of equipment sitting out in the weather out out in the MTA East, and that's with the two billion warehousing uh, requests that come up uh, next. Are going to be, but we think a lot of that could be offloaded with the with the uh, consolidated site and then some mm -hmm. of the rest of the project. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so these next two request items were all interrelated to what we had just been discussing. If we had a general uh, logistics city warehouse and so forth and so on, and then even raising the, the questions of whether the canopy covers would even be needed. Um, <clears throat> and as such a small investment of 440000 for canopy covers, even with a, a major city logistics warehouse, it would not be money wasted in my opinion. But until then, um, uh, we, we do need a city logistics warehouse. And I realize that uh, much discussion and um, <clears throat> collaboration with other departments uh, uh, is ongoing. Mm -hmm. But until then, I've listed it as number 10 as my request at $8.7 million. And in 2024, the uh, 750 would be for uh, A&E &E and possible <clears throat> land acquisition and I believe I have A and E uh, land, land acquisition, land acquisition and A and E and then, and then 2026 would begin construction. Yeah. And that could change as we know, mm -hmm. depending upon um, what the city is able to ascertain and do now and then. Right. Where'd you get the number from? Uh I think, I think yeah, me. I mean, uh, and I got it from the assessor's website. Thank you. No, you got what? I mean, are, you, are you know, you're you talking about a warehouse, so. No, 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 I'm sorry. I was talking about the land acquisition. No, I'm talking about the, what is the basis? What, what's, you know, you, you're basing it on a per, per square foot cost. You know, how did you room. come up with the, with the number for this warehouse. I'd have to look into my specific notes into the ground here. Okay, for, uh, just let me know. Sure. Yeah, I don't, we did, we might have done a, um, an estimate last year for the warehouse, but I didn't do one for this year. Okay, just, just pull your notes and um, follow up on that. So, uh, we want to 11? Yes. <clears throat> Request number 11, appropriately ranked number 11, would be an NLFD warehouse located at our municipal training academy out in East New Orleans. Um, it would mostly house special operations uh, equipment uh, from, from trucks to trailers and so forth and so on. Uh, it has an A and E. The total ask is $8 million. It has an associated A&E fee of $871,000 that we are asking for in 2024 with construction to begin in 2025 at $7.1 million. Okay, well, once again here, and you know how you came up with this number, uh, got a call from Tamika yesterday. But, yeah, please. Uh, I'll look into the square footage of the building and we'll go and see what we came up with price per square foot and submit that to you. Okay. And you said two covers and a whole new warehouse as well? Or no? it, 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 so, so it's two different. The, 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 the MTA warehouse is primarily designed for the equipment that's uh, sitting outside at the Currently sitting outside the training facility, like you saw, uh, mm -hmm. special operations response equipment, uh, addition to spare apparatus mm -hmm. that, that are sitting outside. The NLP logistics warehouse proposal was uh, consolidating uh, our supply annex, which is at 24, which is sound like right now to be located uh, temporarily for a fire station uh, apparatus building, and uh, the uh, supply facility mm -hmm. on that. Some of the warehouse yeah. at the airport. Yeah, oh yeah, and the warehouse stores at the airport. So, the, so like I said, the the, uh, the, the, the the combined public safety warehouse that we're looking at, uh, we think it can handle our supply needs from mm -hmm. the logistics side, the airport warehouse, supply annex, 
and it could probably handle uh, a significant portion of our special operations things that would need to have come through the warehouse. We're just not sure yet, of course, with, with the shared space, how much we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that would be that. That would be, yeah, we, 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 it, it would definitely handle the logistics warehouse piece, mm -hmm. and uh, it probably could handle a portion of the MCU warehouse, but we're not sure yet. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 that's, and that's more like, NOPD has kind of the same, like they have their yes. high water vehicles and stuff like exactly. that that are stored outside. So this is stuff that's not used often, but it needs to be accessible yes, it, for it, 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 Exactly. Yeah. And ideally, that kind of stuff you would prefer to have at the centralized location of the public safety warehouse or one air hole so you could have rapid response downtown with major social rescue equipment. Mm -hmm. like that. so that's why we just have and, and, and there's space outside of that as well that could take it. The canopies could go. So, yeah. Now, um, every, everything's kind of moving at, at the same time, and we don't want to yeah. take it off and not, not consider certain that, that jurisdiction. What condition is the uh, MCA building? Horrible. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it needs to be, but before my MC left, we had a conversation about uh, uh, proposing a complete replacement for the, for the entire facility. You know, we know that's going to be. Uh, Big, uh, a big ask. I mean, the, the, they're currently operating out of the, uh, the upstairs of the main building, which has leaks. And then during the classroom portion of the trailer, it has leaks. We have another temporary trailer on order. And the plan was to uh, situate the temporary trailers, get the operations stable, and then look at what the future plan is. I don't know if we need to request. Uh, or how we go about getting an assessment of what even needs to be requested for for a new facility of that scale. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where where we've been, and just with everything going on in the last couple of years, we haven't had time to really get, get into it with it. But yeah, it, 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 it still needs a lot of work. Can you all get the structural and staff? We've okay. had we we had we had Ramsey and Greg come out, and we've had uh, Mohan and. Uh, uh, Rico come out and all of them are just <laughs> you know kind of shaking their heads. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't I don't I don't know about it based on based on the last I I, I, I know Greg and Ram just said knock it down and start off the street. So I don't know what uh the thought Mohan and Rico discussion was of the uh the same city. It's it's a judgment call. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Structurally it's sand, but Time of its building, it was, it was so. It was, it was an awkward, awkward artist design, artist architect design. Not the, 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 the slope of the roofs and how high they all make it a nightmare to maintain. The primary building just to get just to get equipment to get up there to patch leaks in the roof. It's just. You know, it's, uh, so is this? Are you representing a, a new build, demo and new build? Not on not that. That's not good. 25 to 29 is our capital. Okay. I, th I think that's something that that's something we'll probably need to uh, work with the capital staff this year to figure out how we get a good uh, budget proposal, you know, and, and, and kind of cost out there. What does it even take to, and what does it look like to do that? So we we'll just could. I just completed the walkthrough with uh, the FEMA reps when pertaining to Ida and the scanners was out there, mm -hmm. and there is there's seven buildings. Was seven, one's completely gone. But um, we, we, there is not a single roof up, up there, out there that was not a, uh, un undocumented, or yeah. the terminology that you use, but it was written up. Uh, so that that is you know, working. I don't know if it's in. So they did. They, so they did I'll, capture it. Okay. I, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's what I had mentioned as I worked with the FEMA reps at the Generators that had failed. I had mentioned mitigation, and there was something about a uh, <clears throat> that the funding to the full for state grant and so forth and so on. And I included that into the uh, mm -hmm. uh, the forms. And okay. uh, with the roofing, yeah, it, 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 there's funding available outside of the city's budget and stuff. Could the buildings be saved out there? It's a judgment call. Okay. Catherine, do me a favor. Just put it. Things to do next week. Go out there and take a look at this 
and see what the other one's doing. Yeah, no, no, no. On top of each. Yeah. One group 400 always in some way. Six of stuff and build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire yeah. Same yeah. Kind of yeah. Like yeah. this yeah. fire range to the left, but this is in the back. Yeah. Okay. Just so you get to the I have been out there. Okay. Yeah, you've been out there, but you yeah. go district. You know where they are set. No, I mean I have I've been in and documented it for I think post Ida. The I did oh. the first assessment. Okay. I think. But I'm gonna go out there. Can it be? Can we use a shell? Or we use a I agree with what they're saying with the design of it. Pretty atrocious. Okay. But um, I'll, just I'll, I'll take a look yeah. at it with fresh eyes. Okay. Hey, can I? Uh, can I come with you? Yeah. Okay. And just just as a couple of things for you guys to kind of think of, because walking through with a few of the guys, I'm sure they told you also, if there are things that have been damaged as part of this storm. We actually have the potential if there's something that we can do from a mitigation standpoint that, say, a roof blew off and we can do something that's a step up to keep that from happening. There is potential funding from, on the FEMA side for mitigation that's not going to escape, that it's storm specific, that we're not competing against other people to get, that it's specifically related to either. So some of these. That we're getting into that, that we, we know we're going to have to repair things. Keep that in mind also and say, hey, we may be able to do that, or when you're walking around, keep that in mind because they're constantly asking, <coughs> hey, do you have any mitigation stuff? That they're trying to do, do, any, do any inspections there, explain that to me so okay. that I can say on it for those stations. I, I figured they did because out. I know they show up at all of them that I They got flat roofs, and sometimes they can put a roof on top of a roof yeah. right now and so forth. And so on. A lot of stations with the with the MTEs are so altered and built in the past. So just just keep that in mind while Thank we're you. looking through stuff. So okay, Nick. And uh, last but not least, uh, <clears throat> request number twelve and department ranking number twelve: future fire station and facilities and acquisition. Um, as Chief uh, Nelson has said, that we are ultimately looking to consolidate. Uh, and co-locate certain buildings uh, throughout the fire department as per past uh, surveys. Um, and this is just a generic general uh, request of $3.8 million um, for each year to uh, acquire land. Uh, we still have uh, several locations that need to be consolidated into a new operable and current facility uh, station. 15 and 38, uh, new 6th district headquarters, and uh, geez, I may be overlooking one, but um, that's just a, a constant uh, land acquisition ask for uh, future fire stations. It is listed accordingly as number 12. I didn't realize that that would be um, if, if budget allowed. Okay, do you have locations already identified? Uh, well, we've, we've had locations, we've had areas identified as potential locations uh, for home property management uh, over the years. And the, the problem is when they do find a location, they have the money. So that's kind of why we started putting this in the capital because when, when, you know, when the locations become available for purchase, if the money's not allocated, then by the time the money gets allocated, they're no longer available for purchase. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's kind of thing. But, but, uh, but property management and uh, real estate are actually. Actually, move up to number two because you were talking about as far as comparison. I think uh, yeah, I, I think I think if given the given the given the feasibility of of, of the potential funding for for two and three, then yeah, that might be. Uh, I mean, I mean the 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 district fire headquarters manager is already acquired. But everything else is kind of in progress on land acquisition. We 
Do they have, let's do this. I, I think it would be good if, you know, let's say if property management has, if you've got stations that you want to mm -hmm. consolidate and, and do, uh, does property management, you know, for any of the stations, do we have land identified, uh, you know, like 824? No, we got land. Are there any other areas we also have to identify, identify, identify for, for the relocation of uh, the Alpharetta Street station? Uh, I don't think it's going to cost you up, but I, I, I follow the issue of like, yeah. whether that would be a dollar deal or some kind of some, uh, some cooperative uh, deal. And uh, there was some property in the uh, 1538 area. Let us follow up with that. Let's go ahead and tag. Because if you let's say we gave you money, then Which you know what are you going to do with it? Right, right, right. You know, so, so let's go ahead. If right. we if we can add, okay, for 2024, we've identified, you know, we, we've got potential sites. Right. So if we get the money, we can move on. So let's yeah. identify. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You need you need those numbers so you get the numbers so you make that plan. So well, they have the math for number two. Yeah, that's, that's already done. Number three is question was shown by Ford. Yeah, yeah. We have to find out if it's going to be Yeah, let's identify the sites for a 2024 acquisition. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's all I've got. more item just for for number seven and I, I should have brought this up in our earlier meetings but you know we're taught Greg Nichols is working on you know infrastructure that is more that is more sustainable that and I think that there are options for generators that would be less um, demanding during the hurricane event that I would like to uh, that we might be able to apply for funding for mm -hmm. in a different way. I'm talking about solar. I mean, we should be able to get some HMTP funding. You know, also. Okay. I'll talk to Greg about that. Okay. All right. Okay, I got it. I think that's about it. I guess yeah. to, just to close it out. Questions, edits, or anything uh, in the meantime, please feel free to ask me in the closed window. Um, and then we might have some questions for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.